Well, looks like Kevin's buck fence works great because Tatum just <laughs> snuck in. But that's okay because today we're gonna put up this mesh fencing over the fencing and that way y'all can't get in here, okay? <laughs> it's just so fun though, concrete bags. Everybody's joining us today as we work on the buck pen. Well, how did it go? Good. What's her name again? Nelly. Oh, like me. <laughs> yep. Nelly. You're carrying a buck? Well, the collar snapped off when I was in her front yard. Oh, man. And so I don't want a chance that happening again. Just. Luna, I swear, <laughs> you are not ready. going in there. She's ready. Okay. So Kevin's got to still work on the house. We've got all the tools for that, but they've got this whole area for now. He's super cute. Yeah. So the reason that we have Nelly here <laughs> is that Iverson is in high demand. So we agreed to house Nelly while she gets bred here. Nelly is not our new goat. We didn't buy a new goat. We're just housing her here for about a month or so while she gets bred. Meanwhile, the plan is to breed Fern first and then Stella second. So there's a little bit of a space between the deliveries. If all goes well, Fern will deliver in October and Stella will deliver in November, we think. Now, I know Fern went into heat about a week ago. So we still have a couple weeks before Fern is ready to be bred. So in the meantime, she's just gonna be getting to know Iverson through the fence and we're gonna look for signs of Fern going into heat. I haven't seen Stella go into heat for a while, but they say when you bring a buck here to the farm, it brings your girls in heat. So we're hoping that we'll see Stella come into heat soon. So for now, Nellie and Iverson will be hanging out together. We'll be building the buck house. And in just about 10 days or so, we're gonna bring Fern in here. And we get to see if uh, she does well with the buck. Now Luna will not be getting bred. She's officially retired. Okay, Fern and Stella, that's your new boyfriend. You excited? Look, look who's wagging her tail right now. Luna is the weirdest go on. She's not even in heat. She's just gonna, no, Luna. <laughs> oh, Stella, you got caught in the fence. Oh my gosh, Luna. She loves her boys. Since Lydia and I are early birds and the boys are night owls, we decided to split the chores now in the summer. So Lydia and I do the morning chores and the boys do the evening chores. Yep, so let's get to it. First we feed Hermione because she has been trained to come over to this fence and get her slop. Just dump it on over, Liddy. Okay. Oh. <laughs> There you go. That keeps her busy so she doesn't bug us when we're over here milking. Hermione also gets her grain and her pellets, but not yet. First she gets distracted by all the slop. Next, we go to the milking station and we milk all three mamas, starting with Doris. Oh, there's no food so she's gonna jump back down. Uh oh, where's the scooper? I bet you it's left out there. They left it last night, Liddy. Come on. Come on, Doris. Just be patient. She'll be back here in a little bit. While we milk, Willow and Tilly and Stella all fight over here. Have a jolly good time. Even though Stella doesn't even get milk, she just likes to fight yeah. everybody. Yep. There's your feeder. It's your breakfast, Doris. They love each other and then they fight. What happened to our pail, Lydia? <sighs> Something the boys did, as <laughs> usual. I don't even know where it is. Who knows where it is? Look at that beautiful udder. I just wish it produced more milk. Most of this is just tissue. 
This year I'm excited to do milk testing. I'm gonna go through the process of having a tester come out, having us measure the milk, and then sending the milk to a lab, which is going to test for protein and butterfat content, and then also we're gonna see over the course of their whole year of milking if they qualify for a milking star. This is how they determine who comes next. Sometimes Willow wins the fight and sometimes Tilly wins. But really it just comes down to who sees me open the gate and who runs the fastest. Actually, that is not a bad amount of milk. When so, she first starts out, she, she's pretty good. So yeah. we just have to see if it goes downhill. Yeah, we just have to see how she does throughout the year. There's nobody right. here! Uh oh. <laughs> They completely forgot. They're, Whoa, Tilly! They're probably off fighting over there by the stump. Yeah, oh, they're there over there. Look, watch. When they see me, they'll realize it's time to stop. You guys, Hi. stop fighting. Come on. Yeah. Oh, Doris is like gonna break it. <laughs> oh, run. Tilly, run. run! You're next. Run! Tilly has this tiny little udder, but seems to produce just a ton of milk. Yeah. So it'll be nice to see her udder develop over the years, and she'll probably get even better as time goes on. I've owned goats for about 12 years now, but I've never done milk testing, because before I didn't really care about that, I just cared about our own milk, but now that I really want to see which ones are doing the best and which lines to keep, it'll be fun to do the milk testing. So when I start the process, I'll show you guys what I'm doing for those of you that are interested. Okay, Willow. Willow's all ready. It's finally your turn. Oh, oh that's the first time she's ever done that. I guess because Tilly's on the stand. Yeah. And there's a uh, on the stand. Okay. Look at that big udder on a first freshener. Isn't that crazy? Well, Willow just dumped all of the milk, and you guys, she's not kicking with her back feet anymore. Now she's kicking with her front feet. So she put her front foot back and she just tipped it over. Buddy, she just spilled it. What? With her front foot. Her front foot? Willow! Took this leg back and tipped it over. Gosh darn it, Willow. Well, it happens to the best of us. <laughs> See, look at that. Look at that. Look at She's that. like watching you. Oh no, now I'm gonna have to hold it up like this. Well, I don't know if we can break it anyway. So Stop it. it. I cannot believe that she's doing- <gasps> Willow! She's doing that on purpose! Milking first fresheners is so <laughs> frustrating. But you just gotta keep at it. Eventually she'll learn not to kick. Now while we do the rest of the chores, like feeding the chickens and giving everybody food and water, we let Willow finish up eating here because she's a little bit on the skinny side. This is what happens to Penny also after Penny delivers. She kind of puts all her energy into milk production, so we always want to make sure she gets plenty of extra food. Plus she's a little bit of a slow eater, so she's just going to sit here and chill out for a little bit. Okay. Are you ready to come out? Let's go. Come on. <laughs> ready? Oh, get out of the way. Say go. There they go. <laughs> okay, come, on. come on, hurry. Go find your mamas. Winnie. Come on, Winnie, hurry. Come on. Hurry. Good girl. Next. We feed little Zorro here. He's pretty much ready to be weaned, but we're just being softies and we're feeding him even though he's probably done. I don't like to hear him cry. I know. The goats have now all become pretty good friends. Winnie and Tilly, Zorro and Fern. <laughs> and the last thing is to check on Iverson and Nellie. See how they're doing. You guys have lots of shade. Huh? You doing okay? You sure are cute. And you are one of the loudest little does. 
but you're still cute, little Nelly. Yesterday, Kevin built the platform for the house. So, getting close. And that's how we do chores. There's the bucket. <laughs> I found it over here by Dad's welding stuff. Oh, my word, he was milking his welding machine. <laughs> oh, gosh. Kevin and Ethan are both really forgetful. They will leave stuff all over the place. We like to make fun of them for it. The time we have spent trying to find things that they have lost all over the property is crazy. A couple weeks ago, my family did an amazing thing for me. They woke up early and helped me get some garden chores done. The first job on our list was uncovering the corn. We had to get everything off so that we could now lay dripper lines. Everything's going well so far. No bugs have eaten them yet. They're just trying to get underway and I'm hoping a little bit more water is gonna help them get that. But so far, so good. Next, I uncovered the watermelon and cantaloupe and now the carrots. We had to pick all of the rest of the carrots for the year before they all dry up. And then we had to pull all the last of the greens. Oh, this makes me so sad because everything was getting bitter and dry. Next, it was time to plant sweet potatoes in their place and cover the whole thing with mulch. We've got about 40 pounds of carrots to eat, <laughs> so we've got plenty here. And a little bit of kale left over from this year's greens. So now we can move forward with the summer garden. We've got sweet potatoes, green beans and zucchinis, melons and potatoes, tomatoes, and we can't forget about the corn. I'm crossing my fingers this year, it works. All right, the final peach tree is ready. So today, we're gonna pick everything. <gasps> Let's see how many we can get. These are so good, so juicy. I think these are better than the other one over there. I think that's the May Pride, and then this is the, I don't know, but I think that this one's better. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, there's more than you think on this blackberry bush, so let's try to pick all of the really ripe ones. So we have to do something about these bucklings. The buck being here has caused all of the little bucklings and the does to be in the mood for breeding. And so what we need to do is lock up all these little bucklings because they're really getting in the mood for breeding and following our does around. Who knows, they might just be old enough to breed a little bit. So we're gonna have to lock the boys up during the day and we'll bottle feed them so they still get their nutrition. Tonight for dinner, we're gonna do something a little bit different, guys. We're going vegan, or I guess almost vegan. I wanted something light for dinner after a really hot day, and this is what I came up with. We're gonna make buffalo wings out of cauliflower, and so we'll start by mixing up a batter with flour and water and spices. And as messy as it is, we're just gonna get our hands in there and mix it all up. On to the salad. So tonight is gonna be a mango quinoa salad. After it's all cooked and fluffed up, I'll make a simple dressing of lime, olive oil, and you guessed it, honey. While I was making this dressing, the most adorable thing happened and I just had to share. My sister and her two kids live in our guest apartment, and while you don't see them much here on the vlog, they're always around behind the scenes, and my little niece Ivy is so hilarious. 
She often comes in while I'm cooking to tell me stories, and this one I just had to share. Can you ask your mom if she has, if I can borrow some cilantro? Um, sure. Go ask your mom if I can have some cilantro. Yeah, this, this is the part of Sherlock and his throat up onto mom's floor, <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then he likes, and then he likes it to eat his, his own throat. Oh no, that's gross. Yeah, that, that, and, then, and it looks so like soup. Oh my gosh. So that's it guys. It was amazing, like hands down, really good. We paired it with our homemade ranch and the mango quinoa salad. All right, it's time to do the chores. Since I'm kind of the night owl, it's my job to do whatever jobs need to be done out here. It's pretty easy. You just lock the baby goats up and make sure they all have food and water. <laughs> uh, good night, Tilly. Good night, Willow. And Winnie. She sleeps on her little brick over here. Good night, goaties. They're all looking up because they want to get out except for Zorro because he's already asleep. Thanks for watching today's video, guys. If you want to watch the video where Luna was obsessed with this buck, click right here.